good. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Magnus, and I'm about to speak about X sockets and WebRTC. First of all, a quick introduction on myself. Uh, as I told you, my name is Magnus. Uh, T H O R Thor is the Scandinavian name, pronounced Thor. And uh, I'm not related to the Marvel superhero at all, even though people tend to think so, especially when I'm in the US doing talks. Uh, they like like this guy. Yeah, uh, 20 minutes is uh, the time I have to talk about X sockets and WebRTC. Have you heard of WebRTC? Yeah, cool. Uh, I believe WebRTC is uh, something that will change the way we tend to do our real-time development. Uh, therefore, we started to do WebRTC stuff. I think it was one and a half year ago. And today I'm about to show you some of the features that I believe will change the way we do uh, web, web apps uh, in the future. Xrockets is developed by developers, for developers, and it's a uh, .NET based application that um, utilizes uh, the existing patterns such as MVC. And we also had in mind when we designed the framework uh, that people don't need to change the way they tend to do stuff because uh, some of the frameworks they have been testing I have been testing is um, uh, are clever but they are time consuming when it comes to to do stuff because we need to learn new stuff all the time uh, which is good but it is always uh, a problem as well Xsocket uh, runs in your local machine uh, in your server room or in the cloud. We are running um, Xsockets today mostly on Azure, Windows Azure, which is a fantastic platform for such things. And uh, I'm going to do some coding. Uh, unfortunately, I'm too tall for this table, but it will probably work. <clears throat> when it comes to WebRTC, uh, one of the biggest issues or, or problems is the signaling, uh, how we solve the signal transport, uh, transportation. We're using a cloud-based um, X-Sockets controller, which is similar to an MVC controller. This one is placed on Azure, as you see, this extremely long URL. It's the peer broker, and it's using the biggest APIs of XSockets, which is a wrapper, uh, a pub sub pattern uh, upon the WebSockets APIs. First of all, we need to listen to an event called open, sorry, bind, and we are then expecting a connection to our controller this way. Let's see if we got the connection. I had some problems earlier with the network. Let's see what happens. Yeah. It's pending. Yeah. We are connected to the peer broker on Azure and we receive the client grid, which is our local identifier of our connection. When this is done, we need to create an instance of the WebRTC helper that you find in XSockets. That's called WebRTC. Xsockets, WebRTC, and in order to 
be able to communicate and send the signals for our peers. We need to pass the WebSocket into this, this object. And when we are uh, connected, as we are now, to the XSockets uh, controller, we can say on our WebRTC object that we are expecting something called context to change. I will soon explain contexts. This is not easy, I can assure you that, typing in this position. <laughs> Let's go back to Chrome. Uh, when we connect to the pair broker or the controller on, the, on, the, on Azure, we receive a client, a client with, and when you connect the broker will store our identity and pass back something called context, which is some sort of session. In this case, the session is named a grid. Uh, by sharing this context, we can exchange the pairs and attach a pair connection to each client connected to the broker. And when we have a pair connection established, we're able to do page-to-page -page communication we don't need to hit the server as we need to do in WebSockets. Uh, the only, only time the server is involved is in the handshake and uh, establishment of the peers, etc. When we have the context and we have those contexts interchanged between clients, we can have data passed on data channels, which is an API uh, found in WebRTC. Uh, when we have this uh, pair connection established and this context created, it's time for us to access the local device, our local uh, camera. This is done by calling Get UC Media, which is a new API uh, found in HTML5. Uh, we also have a wrapper for that one in XSockets. And I will tell my It uses media that they want to have audio and video. Sorry, uh, I will have a function. Uh, when we are accessing our local video, we can say that our client is ready. I also prepared this demo by using a static context. Uh, or else we need to send the context to make the call to invite other clients to contact to our, our web page. So I'm just saying in this case, WebRTC to change context and pass the static context. And as I tell the WebRTC object that we are ready and also pass in the user media, uh, uh, the media stream, we need to attach this media stream to our local video element. I created this, this uh, HTML5 video tag in my page. Let us just then uh, say, when we receive the media stream from our local machine, this is a stream. We can attach this media stream to our uh, DOM element, which is the local video, and just send the stream into our video element. This is a function that helps us doing this. That's a simple thing. It attaches the blob. And when I run the code now, the browser should prompt me for access the local device, uh, network 
went down. Yeah, let's see if we have a working internet connection. No. Let's try to disconnect and connect once again. It will probably help us. You guys need to turn off. Uh, yeah, now we have a, a connection to a repair broker well, uh, established again. And we will now uh, give access to the local camera. And as you see, there's an image or video element running in my web page. Uh, so let us also then see if we can attach uh, remote pairs, making some sort of small video conference. Uh, the thing we need to do then is just to add a new listener to our web page called webr 2 uh, events, and it should be something called on remote stream. Uh, yeah. And I can copy the code. It's much more convenient for me to do it that way. Let's see. It's called event here. And in this case, I'm creating a new video element using jQuery, defining some properties, and attaching the remote stream to the created video element. And we're also, also prepending this video tag to our web page into this thing called videos, I think. Uh, no. Let's also create a new div called videos. Div ID videos should be great. And let's run this once again. See if we have a working connection. No. You need to turn off uh, Dropbox, I think. <laughs> I'll do the same thing once again. I will disconnect and connect. It helped me last time. Yeah. I'm allowing the camera on my machine. I'm copying this URL. I open up a new window. This time I'm Mr. Pink, which seems to be a yellow, a red, red guy, and make it this way. And as you see, it prompts me to access local uh, media. Nothing happens. Which would I and you appear here? Yeah, let's wait a few minutes, see what happens. And try it once again. Yeah, strange. Let's see if we have a Local stream here from the remote peers. I don't think the network is reliable here at the moment. I think it will help us. I think it's the uh, the problem is. Network, I think. I will try this other example doing the same thing. I'm running the other record example. Yeah, yeah, there it comes. It will take a few minutes, I think to establish the network, or let me see if I can receive a video in the other window. Yeah. This black box should have been the remote video stream. Uh, 
by some reason it doesn't work uh, over the network. I will try it once again. Doing the same thing may work. Yeah. So let us imagine that the black box is 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 Magnus, uh, and I will also open up yet another window. I think you will understand what I'm about to show you or was about to show you. Yeah. I can try it this way as well. Um, just reloading this page and using Mr. Blue. Yeah, it takes a hell of a time to. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and let us also try yet another window with Mr. Pink and see if we receive. Another pair connection. It will take. Yeah. Yeah. So I think WebRTC is uh, a thing that will change the way we work using the web. Uh, this changed the way we do real time communication. As video is one way, uh, it's one use case. The other use case is to use the uh, local or, or data. Data channels. Uh, in this example, I have a, a text box. I can also do send here. In this case, I will be sending a message uh, page to page. It is not hitting the server. It is using the, the data channels. Uh, I can show you a piece of code how it looks like. Uh, it is pretty much the same thing as we did with the uh, local media streams. Trying to connect to my Team Foundation server. Yeah. In this case, uh, we are receiving an event called on peer connection created uh, down here at line 56. I'm just saying that subscribe to a channel named DM. Uh, and when you get a callback or a message, just prepare the text message to a div tag. And when we are hitting the send button in our chat, we are saying channel publish DM text, which is the value of our input field. One thing that we have um, been experiencing uh, when we are working with with um, WebRTC is that uh, those APIs that we are uh, given the chance to use, they are moving extremely fast forward. Things are happening uh, each and every week. Uh, there's uh, recently a new function that gave us uh, the chance to do screen sharing as well. Uh, when we pass the constraints to our our um, get user media function, we can just say screen sharing, and we are able to to share uh, the, the the desktop of your PC or, or Mac, which is a nice function, I think. Uh, some people tend to think that WebRTC will be the end of Skype, uh, but I don't think so. Skype is something else. It's, a, it's, a, it's an application with a large amount of users. Uh, but I think we will see uh, a lot of new uh, use cases uh, for our customers. Uh, for instance, we can build a customer service uh, replacing the traditional chat on our web, web, web pages uh, that enables people to, to call the, the, the customer service and, and uh, speak with them using video without involving any expensive uh, frameworks or, or platforms. Uh, so it's, um, I think it's a, a new way of doing real-time stuff, uh, and WebRTC will, 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 will change the way we do stuff. 
Yep, I will go back to my presentation and uh, just. Uh, Finish it up. Uh, you can reach me at uh, the tour, which is my Twitter, Twitter nick, and also you can grab your your um, grab some information about Xarchets on Xarchets.net. It's a free platform. Uh, you can install it using NuGet or pull down some examples from GitHub. <laughs> Uh, the source code for this video application is available on the uh, GitHub. Uh, it's a more more proper application as well, where you can place phone calls and invite people to to the conference, etc. Uh, just 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 have a look at our website, and you will find it there. Yeah, thanks.